Uh, no, but, y'all know yeah. when you come here, you're in for a good time because yeah. here, I don't do anything straight. Um, <laughs> Shift in the market is definitely going to yeah. really test some individuals. That's, that's for sure. Yeah, it is. And here's the thing with our agent locator leads. Um, certainly, we all want to see response right away. I, I absolutely, I do too, but I've learned through my entire years of doing this that I would be doing myself a disservice if I believed these leads were going to turn over quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's just not the case for the, for the majority of them. And what we're seeing in the market is such a change that uh, I want to know the questions that you guys have in in trying to figure out how you can consistently make money while we're waiting for people to uh, be able to buy. We've got another interest rate hike coming up. I believe it's September the 12th. So I think as a group of colleagues, if we can use this discussion, if you're okay with it, Crystal, Mm -hmm. on how do we maintain that mindset when we're not seeing response right away with our leads? My uh, last three weeks, the response that I'm getting through my drip campaign is absolutely phenomenal. I have people consistently wanting to see homes. That's step one, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. They may want to see a home, but they may still not be ready to purchase. So now I'm back in the car with them for extended periods of time. But that's where I know I'm going to consistently get them because they're in my car. Mm -hmm. So shall we do, do you think, Crystal, another Q&A? Yeah, absolutely. We can definitely, definitely do that. Um, and, and learning and, you know, other people, what they're doing in this current market to help boost the, the response rate or, you know, how they're keeping themselves motivated to keep doing it when things may have slowed down. Uh, we all know what it's like to be go, 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 go. And all of a sudden we kind of lose the momentum as soon as things lessen on our plates, right? It's hard to get that momentum going again when it's not forced. Um, but yeah, cause it's, everyone is only going to benefit from it. Um, or if you are, you know, if there's little things that you are sending out to your leads periodically, whether it's part of a campaign or you're just sending one off mass emails or emails to individuals, you know, if there's anything that you are sending that is also gaining, you know, it, you know, obviously you don't have to share it word for word, but you know, the topic of the the content of that that email and what it would include that's actually getting the response rate uh, from those those individuals. So yeah, I think that through this, as things slow down, we're going to see a lot of people getting frustrated, a little bit more frustrated with the process because it's going to take a little bit longer, um, nonetheless. So right, I, yeah, yeah, it, okay. So, Hmm. And actually, and I do have something. So I Otto sent me a video and I watched it um, the other day. The, the, tra- the coach or whoever was in this video, I had to watch it on two separate occasions because I couldn't watch the whole thing in one. It was just personality was just too much for me. Um, <laughs> I had to take a break. But he had some good points in what he was saying. And, and that is from... Like, as we're kind of watching, and I'm sure you can concur with this, is that people who are looking for homes are starting their searches earlier and earlier and earlier. Um, so whereas before, traditionally, people would start searching, you know, much closer to the time that they're considering a transaction, whereas now they're searching, you know, two years ahead, three years ahead, sometimes five years they start their search before they move. Um so that's one thing to consider that your leads that are coming in, as, as Tara recognizes, most of them aren't moving right now, right? It's being there to facilitate that. Um, but another topic, and, and you may have had some experience with this as well, is um, being more of an educational kind of background, right? So when you're talking to a lead and you're sitting back and listening and offering information and education and and actually guiding them through that process, um, that's where you're going to actually achieve the the higher level of people being responsive to you when you are calling them back, 
right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of us have had conversations with our leads where, you know, you think everything's gone great and da, 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 da. And they're like, yeah, give me a call in a couple of weeks and da, da, da. And then they ghost you. You can never get them on the call again. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's super frustrating, right? Because you thought the call went well. Um, and this guy, he's saying, basically, when we go from a more educational standpoint in customer service and guiding these individuals, you're going to actually, people are going to be excited to talk to you because you're actually sharing information that they're benefiting from. Mm-hmm. Right? We're not just, it's not just talking about their criteria and this and that. We're, we're guiding them through that process. So they'll want to talk to you again because you've added value. You've given them something that they could benefit from. You know, this is, this goes back to uh, old school Brian Buffini, mm-hmm. right? We have something of value to give these people. We have our knowledge, whether or not mm-hmm. You know, and and for the new agents that maybe have only or first year in the business or even the first two years in the business, you still have a lot to learn, but you still have value to give these people. Um, And I think that going back to the old school style of real estate, which is where we're at now, uh, there were times when I would get people in the car and it might take me a year before I sold them a house. That wasn't because I wasn't providing them something of value. It's because there are some people that will see five houses that they really liked, but in their heads are going, but five more is going to be on the market tomorrow, Mm -hmm. right? And that's what we're dealing with in the normal real estate is there are some people that do need to see a lot of homes until they get that, oh my God, this is the one, Mm -hmm. right? And I think that the feeling that you have to get, just like you said, is identify who you're working with. Really work on your budget of your commissions and how you're budgeting the money that you have coming in. Because right now we're working really, really hard and we have to be able to live financially Mm -hmm. uh, until that next deal comes into fruition. And if your buyer or that lead needs to see 50 houses you got to show them 50 houses you know that's who you're working with you know come from a place of contribution Mm -hmm. right just like I loved how you said that guy the trainer referred Mm -hmm. to customer service Mm -hmm. right uh this is what do I always say Crystal this is their show Mm -hmm. right so, so we can't show them we're too hungry. We can't show them that we need the money. What we have to do is provide the service. Mm-hmm. But I also do believe after so many houses that you've showed, if we're not taking a step back and going, okay, guys, are any one of these worth trying an offer on? Mm-hmm. Right? We still have yeah. to be trying to close. And if they're yeah. like, just didn't get the feeling Then what we want to do, my biggest trick of the trade was this. I never leave one appointment without the next appointment booked. Mm -hmm. Okay, buyer A, none of these are good. I get that. I think we can find you a better house. So can we set up another showing uh, for Saturday at one o'clock? Right now, what am I doing? I'm keeping my people in the car. Mm -hmm. And if I can't get that other appointment booked, you can be, you can check my phone within 24 to 48 hours. I'm texting them going, hi guys, when can we go out again? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Does anybody have any thoughts on that? What they're experiencing with this market that we're dealing with now? For the most part, what I've always found, Crystal, with my leads mm-hmm. is there was a time period where I was converting, and this was probably closer to about 12, 13 years ago, the people that came in within the first three months, I was converting those very quickly. The longer leads took me longer. Yeah. Then it switched. And for the next three years, it was the leads that were on my system anywhere from six months to two years that I was actually starting to have a higher turnaround. Mm-hmm. That happened when we started getting a lot more inventory. And now I'm finding it's a little bit, it's a mixed bag. For instance, I just listed a property uh, yesterday. This woman came on four and a half years ago. 
And four and a half years on and off, she's been in the car, out of the car, in the car, out. of. So, you know, it took me. Last night, the lead came on, registered. I've got an agent in our brokerage showing her her first house Mm -hmm. uh, Sunday. And she came on last night. It's it's It's, a it's a it's really weird. Uh, But what's everybody's what what are your questions? Oh, Sabine, Sabrina, this is who you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you want to read that, Crystal? Sure. Uh, do you pay for Google Leads or do you pay for Facebook as well? Um, Sabrina has stopped her Facebook and just have the Google Leads right now. Well, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Crystal, you can do both with Agent Locator, right? Can't mm-hmm. you? Yep. The oh, yeah. Yeah, so you can do both. Do they go to you to say, I now want to pay for Facebook leads and then Agent Locator coordinates that? Yeah, if uh, yeah, definitely. So you can be running one or the other or both. Um, you can also run your own Facebook ads and feed your own leads if you're inclined to learn or know what you're doing um, to set that up. Um, it's not too complicated, but not every, a lot of people just say, you know what, I want to work the leads but, and they do real estate. I'm not a, a, a marketer. <laughs> right? So right. they, they have it done. Um, Cause I know how some people that they like know exactly how to do it. It's just, oh. they've allocated it to somebody else to just, you know what, I need to focus on this. I can't focus on everything um, to be able to do this one job correctly. But, right. um, but yeah, you just have to, you can reach out to our support team. You can reach out to your sales rep if you know who they are. Okay. Um, and they can help get that I started. Guess, yeah. Sabrina, were you doing Facebook leads on your own or were you using Agent Locator? And I guess as we're waiting for her to answer, mm-hmm. you have kind of like an opinion on the back end of it, which one are both good to do together? Or do you find the Google, the Google ones are still more convertible? So Google leads definitely have intent, right? So there's definitely intent. They're going online. They're specifically searching for something. Uh, Facebook, we generally don't go on Facebook to search for things to buy. Um, sometimes we do go on marketplace, of course, uh, because we are looking and then there's that, but that's not our initial intentions when we're going on social media. Um, so you're putting something in front of somebody that may, um, align with something that they're interested in and you're engaging them that way. Right. Now, what I'm finding, though, is and it's interesting because I'm, I'm kind of watching Facebook and learning algorithm, learning about what it's doing. And I've noticed because I've searched on Marketplace for something, something I was looking for a dog grooming thing. <laughs> now, because I did that, I'm seeing everyone sponsored ads about this pet groomer thing, this pet groomer thing, this pet groomer thing. Um, so it's listening to what people are actively searching for on that marketplace. So if people are searching for homes, then they're going to be more likely to see your ad, which is a good thing. Um, the time to convert a Facebook lead is not going to be much, much different. Um, you'll probably get more, less of the buying now type people. Um, but it, as far as those that are, you know, six, 12, whatever months out from, you know, that's very similar. Um, you just want to make sure if you are running ads, we're not doing bait and hook ads. We're being realistic, right? right. You know, what people would actually be looking for. Um, so you're getting leads that are, you know, looking for a family home in the Durham region under 1 million. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's a realistic search of what somebody would be looking for. So um, that right. You mm-hmm. so I would assume you would create the ad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. We would create the ad based in the target area. You know, some people are like, oh, I don't want I don't deal with condos. I don't want anyone looking for condos. And so then, you know, family home, are you looking for a house with a basement apartment or, you know, there's all different scenarios of what people would be potentially looking for. So we can target and a lot of with the wording um, to bring those individuals in. Right. And so you generally get a little bit more leads on Facebook than you do on Google. As well. so you get okay. your dollar goes a little bit further on the buying side, on the buying side, generally speaking, obviously if an area is really like convoluted with people advertising, not just for us, but everywhere for the same thing, um, your lead costs obviously would go up. Sellers are generally par, like Google, Facebook, sellers, they're generally in and around the same price. Mm-hmm. On there. Okay. 
So I guess, I guess here's my take, uh, Sabrina, is as you can tell, if I'm asking Crystal these questions, mm -hmm. I clearly don't buy Facebook leads. I mean, I'll do a property, I'll boost the post, I do all kinds of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't do it expecting that I'm going to sell the property that way. Mm -hmm. I do it basically for branding. So that's my mindset. And I do it because I want to be able to say to my people, my sellers, you know, we've got it everywhere. We're paying to get it everywhere. Um, I, I've always used the Google leads. That's been from the moment I started, uh, from the moment realtor.ca was created. And then these Google lead, uh, companies came into fruition. I've always used Google. I will always swear by them. Um, I, again, just this week, more people in the car, uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to sell them a house tomorrow, <laughs> right? We might be, mm -hmm houses mm -hmm. for another year. It's up to them, yep. not me. Um, so I really believe in the Google leads. However, mm -hmm. here's what I think. It's easy to give up on the Facebook leads. I think before giving up on them, what you need to sit and ask yourself is, okay, how do I reach these people and communicate with these people differently because they're not responding to me? And that's where, as we're doing our um, lead conversion, this is why I'm always saying to you, if something's not working, take a step back and go, okay, I've tried doing this mm -hmm. and nobody's replying back. So clearly I need to either reword it or I need to try something different. Because honestly, you know, as you talk about the Facebook leads, in my mm -hmm. mind, as a uh, obsessed lead person, I'm thinking to myself, why am I not doing that? <laughs> yeah. Right? Why am yeah. I not? Because here's the deal. Remember, if the lead isn't responding right away, if the lead is only giving you a little bit, that doesn't mean that they're not ever going to use you. You you, you know, sometimes we mm -hmm. got to and look at the, yeah. the house that I just listed in Oshawa yesterday, four and a half years is how long mm -hmm. I've been speaking with this woman, right? Does that help you at all, Sabrina, a little bit? I think what we're going to do going forward, Crystal and I were talking this morning, mm -hmm. is we're going to kind of start creating um, a drip for people. Yeah, yeah. Um, certainly, it's you're not going to have the, the, the Terra drip. But you guys can do this on your own. And this is you what can. I keep stressing to everybody. Yes. Everybody wants to have a copy of my drip and I have no problem. Um, I'm not trying to be, you know, weird about it. Yeah. But I also know that if I can do it and create it on Agent Locator, so can all of you. It's just yeah. a matter of putting all of our thoughts together and mm -hmm. starting to form Bring it together. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So we can, and, and so one of my suggestions, because it, it seems to come up almost every webinar <laughs> we have, it's like, can I see, can I get a copy of that? Can I do it? Um, it can be overwhelming for many because we're saying, hey, you got to do this and like all these things, and then you got to put it all together. So what the, my suggestion was, is that anyone that wants to contribute, we're just asking that you contribute one email. Right, so one email that you can send it to me and I'm going to put it all into a Google Doc that we can share. We can review it all together, um, you know, uh, critique them, make adjustments, maybe wording, collaborate, things like that. Or it can just send it to you guys all as is. And then it's just a matter of you copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. Uh, we may be able to get our support team to help you with that as well. But then it's kind of, you know, what's important to you that you would want to communicate to your clients? Um, how would you want to approach them when you're trying to just check in? What information do you feel is valuable that you think that they should know? Um, so it's just just one email. That's it. So you're going to produce one email and you'll get an entire campaign. Okay? We all work together. Yeah, you know, it's like one of those like gift things where you just got to buy like five yeah. cards and you send it to five people and they got to send it to five. You should get five shoes back, whatever that thing was. <laughs> I never did it. Never worked. How do you always feel stuff. about that? How do you feel about that? Here's what I've said repeatedly is if you want to send me your emails, I'll tweak them. This is something that I am uh, very, very good at for whatever mm. the reason. That's how my mind is. I'm all about. Uh, writing and 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 remember, this is coming from a place 
where I'm consistently putting myself in the lead shoes, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that we could formulate something really, really fantastic with, even if you can't formulate an entire email, even if you just send bullet points, here's the thing I'd like to say throughout my drip campaign. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, Crystal and I can kind of put it all together and then voila, Mm -hmm. right? Well, exactly. Starts. That's what starts. And that's exactly what I said, I think a couple of sessions ago. For Mm -hmm. me, I just went, okay, the first email is, hey, thanks for coming on the system, right? So we've got some people. Yes. Do you want to go ahead, Crystal? I think there. Yeah, there's a there's a handful of them. Um, so campaigns agent locators, same as the drip. Yes, yes, campaigns are a drip. Um, the welcome campaign uh, could it's it might be the standard one unless you custom create it. If you did, then that's fantastic. Um, Christina saying, let's do this email thing. Uh, Rome, uh, Gloria saying, where do we sending our piece to? So you guys can send them to me. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll create a Google doc, um, so that we can share it. And what's great is that on a Google doc. And so whether we're collaborating on here or else by elsewhere, if everyone has that Google doc open at the same time, you can comment. So in real time, we can be commenting on, you know, adjustments or things like that. Um, and I'll try to get that list to all of you guys so anyone that's here on the webinar today i'm going to make sure that um you're able and i don't know how i'll be able to do it actually i can do it um i'll be able to pull who's attended it then that way you guys i can potentially send you that google link um directly so that you may even have it prior to our next webinar so that you can go in and even add comments um on the various ones that you want, uh, that we've contributed in there. If you guys aren't a, a little bit shy and you don't want everyone to know that you contributed that email, because I'd like to mention just so that you guys get some credit for your, your work. But if you want to kind of create it anonymously, just let me know. And then that way I won't put who submitted that content. Um, but I think that it's a great way. So you yeah. guys can, hold on, I'm just going to send this. Um, yeah. You can send it to me, Gloria. So I'll put my email in, the, in here and then yeah. that way. And Pal has asked here uh, to stay active in the business. How many leads should I be expecting per month? Currently, I'm getting on average 10 leads and I don't think that's enough. So if he's getting 10 leads, I'm assuming then Crystal, he's probably on the lower yeah, oh, yeah, we're, yeah, so yeah. how does the stay active business, so how many leads should I be expecting or currently I'm getting average is 10. Um, you, really, it's a matter of how much you, obviously, the more you spend, the more leads you're going to get, the more conversions you're going to have, hypothetically, but you're also going to miss out on a lot of leads. You're going to have a lot of leads slip through the cracks. You're going to drop the ball out on a lot of leads if you're overdoing it as well. Um, I can see, yeah, what we could be averaging 10, it could be your target area as well. Um, you are targeting Vaughn with your budget. Um, I would definitely reach out to our marketing team so you can do that through support. Um, they can look at that and make suggestions. So if you're, you're trying to achieve a certain number of leads, I'd say I'll go for a lead a day at most two leads a day, that's going to give you 30 to 60 leads a month, really. Um, The budget for that is all going to depend on your target area, right? But if you look at average conversion in a calendar year being one to 2%, uh, you're going to get to 100 leads a lot faster doing 60 leads a month than you were 30 leads a month, right? So as long as you work in them, as long as you actually actually work in their database, they're not going to convert themselves, right? So. That's yeah. the key. And and yeah. Paul and I had a nice conversation last week. Thank you for coming on on the uh on the Zoom, pal. A wonderful, mm-hmm. wonderful realtor in the bond mm-hmm. area. Um, mm-hmm. it's really great to get the new leads in. Uh, mm-hmm. when you're getting sometimes when you're really busy, when you're getting one or two a day or more, depending on what your budget is, you have to have the mindset and you have to have the systems in place that you know you still have to work those leads. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Cause it is really easy to let them sit on the dashboard. And because I coach so many realtors for this, if I had a nickel for every realtor that has said to me, I open up that dashboard and I have a heart attack because I haven't done anything. They're just sitting there. Um, and, and quite honestly, a lot of them you may have lost, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. really before you up your budget, which a hundred percent, I think everybody should up their budget. Uh, and I'm not here trying to get you all to spend more money on agent locator, but the bottom line is this, if you have very few leads come in, you're going to have very few conversions. It is always a numbers game. Mm-hmm. So bring them in, have the systems in place that you can automatically know that these leads are being worked. And it starts with a drip campaign first and mm-hmm. foremost, it starts mm-hmm. having that in the system. Uh, do the automatic assignment, and at least you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, think about it. And I think for Pal, what you need to do is you need to say, okay, you know, I'm going to up the budget, but let me just figure out how I'm going to time block so that I can make sure that I'm not getting overwhelmed. Absolutely. Yeah, because it seems easy enough uh, when it's one day, like you're getting one a day. Oh, that's nothing. One a day, one a day. Well, it's compounding, right? It's not just the one a day. It's, it's you're accumulating an overall number, a lead count that you still are responsible for, right? It's just you're starting off at a certain certain amount. So I'd look also at your system, making sure you're, you've got your systems in place, that you're currently on top of all of your leads, right? And then when you're like, okay, I can totally up this. I'm managing it 100%. And then kind of go from there. But um, the last thing you want to do is increase your budget too much. And then you get overwhelmed. And then you, it was ineffective because you just kind of stopped working everything because there was just too much going on. Right. Right. And that's the key. So it really mm-hmm. goes back to, you know, what is your mindset? You know, are you in real estate to have the commitment to have the systems in place in order to keep working these leads? And no, if you're going to increase your budget, please expect that it is going to take you longer with this market to convert the leads. Um, And there is nothing that we can do. There is absolutely nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. So expect again, they're going to come in your car, but expect that you're also going to be showing them houses probably for a very long time. Um, Now that we have the third interest rate coming up on, I think the date, September the 12th, um, as I'm, as I'm getting new people in the car, I'm actually now uh, emphasizing even more so if I could say, because I always did. uh, But even more so, I'm saying, have, uh, have you revisited uh, your mortgage pre approval in the last 30 days? Um, because listen, I'm talking to a lot of realtors. I've had a lot of realtors that, uh, have talked with me who are on a variable rate. Uh, one of which their mortgage has gone up a thousand dollars a month. And that's before this third interest rate. So Um, I think really, uh, maybe even saying I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to show you houses, but if it's been over 60 days since you've had communication with your current lender, I advise you to talk again. And this is how I say it. I just need to make sure that I'm protecting you when you do want to do an offer on a property. Mm-hmm. It's a very strange time we're living in from yeah. real estate right now. A little uneasy. <laughs> yeah, I know. So all it's the unknown, right? And it's not necessarily a good unknown. Um, Now we have uh, a question here. It's wondering what we should be saying to leads right now. So what should we be saying to them the last couple of weeks to notice the pickup in the sold? Uh, Would you let them know that the market is picking up? Um, Or, you know, and just say, but we aren't sure how much inventory also seems a little bit uh, lower as well. So I think there's, you know, now we're starting to see where people were selling and perhaps now they're pulling back and be like, mm, maybe now is not the right time to be selling. So 
what would you encourage or suggest that if we are just, you know, reaching out to our leads, whether we're picking up the phone and just, you know, seeing if they have any questions for us or what have you, um, or through email, what would you encourage? What should be said or how would we approach that with those individuals that we have in our system? I've always been very positive, but I'm going to tell you what I've noticed uh, in the last couple of weeks with so many properties not closing. Um, weird stuff going on, weird stuff going on. Um, I'm, I'm concerned about the market. Uh, I think that, of course, I'm still a salesperson. So if somebody wants to list their house, you can only be open and honest. Uh, you're not going to get as much money, but the bottom line is you've still done very well. Uh, a lot of the people that want to sell now have owned their homes for, for many years. There's still tons of equity. So I'm always going to be positive about it. Uh, however, from the buyer's perspective, um, appraisals right now, and they were before, but appraisals right now are absolutely insane what's coming back. Um, and I think that, listen, we got to get these people in our car. Otherwise, we're not making any money. So I really do everything I can to make sure that they've got all their I's dotted and their T's crossed, uh, that we double check, triple check with their mortgage lender. If uh, I'm also telling them that we have a lot of inventory. However, in the last two or three weeks, the inventory has really gone almost nil again. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about it is these houses that are on the market are not selling. And across the board, there's very little uh, showings mm -hmm. as well. So we're kind of at a standstill. So this is what I do. Uh, I did it yesterday when I listed the home in Oshawa. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. You could be sitting with no showings. It's going to take time. If it doesn't, great. You're one of the lucky ones. Uh, but all you can do is try. And this is exactly what I say. And this is exactly what we talked about this morning in our meeting with leadership here. All we can do is keep trying with the price to try to figure out what the best thing is to do. But as a commission salesperson, I want, I still want the listing, right? So you got to stay positive as well as being total real, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's and sometimes the truth is scary though right it's, it's like I don't want to tell them the truth because it's not necessarily good news right and we also are trying to protect ourselves so it's it's yeah. a tricky time for everyone where you know it wasn't just easy just easy listing gone listing gone right it, yeah. it's yeah. there's a little bit more work involved now to, yeah. to get those deals happening um we also don't listen, you know, we have to be honest if it's not in if for some reason your seller is telling you there's money situations or there's something behind the scenes where you feel it really as a professional isn't in their best interest to list, mm -hmm. uh, then you need you need to be as honest as you can. Um, we have to be that being said. I didn't really, I saw stabilization happen. I didn't see this type of drop happening. Mm -hmm. I did not foresee this. Um, and I'm not really certain what the heck is going to happen in September, October, November. Is it going to yeah. drop further? So this is where I'm saying to my sellers right now, all you can do is try. And that's what I'm here for. That's what my job is. And we just got to play it week by week. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's really, really strange what's happening. Yeah, it's, I'm surprised that they're doing another hike, but hey, you know. So my mortgage broker told me, um, you know, mm -hmm. take it for a grain of salt because, you know, it's not up to whatever tidbits they get. There's going to be another one before the end of the year as well. After oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, this is going to, yeah. So here's the interesting thing about it. Okay, let's let's look at it this way. Um, you know, there could potentially be many, many people that can no longer af afford their mortgages. Mm -hmm. That is always a potential. When that happens, then this is what we saw a few years ago, way back in the day, is then people have to sell. 
Mm-hmm. So now we have a flood of inventory, even more so because there are people that simply cannot afford the rate hikes. Um, especially if their term is coming up. So I think, you know, for us, if we're calling, if one of our pillars of our business is calling our past clients, you know, maybe right now, aside from the leads, is also checking in with your past clients and seeing how are things going? Has your mortgage been affected? And maybe giving some market updates as well Mm -hmm. to people Mm -hmm. just being on that safe side that they're always thinking of you as that person to to continue that. Yeah. And like a more personal approach is always, I don't know, received a lot better than just sending them an email about it or dropping something in their, their mailbox that they have to, to read. Whereas mm-hmm. if you're actually taking the time to call them and check in to make sure they're okay, then it's almost, it's, it's solidifying the, the, the fact that they're likely going to use you again. Right. You're not just it's not a one time deal with you. It's I want to make sure you're good. I know we've we've worked and you bought this. I'm sure you have a lot of questions with what's going on. Yeah. How it might affect you in the long run. Right. And then taking that and now, you know, incorporating that in one of your touches to your leads. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, how's here's here's what I have in one of my drip campaigns when it talks about uh, the mortgage brokers. I always say. You know, one of my emails is, you know, I work with some of the best preferred partners in the business. Uh, If you have any mortgage questions, and maybe you could tweak that a little bit with all of these interest rates, we're all left astounded. Mm -hmm. Um, If you have questions about your current situation, here's some numbers you can call. Uh, you know, and 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 do that as a touch. I always mm-hmm. find when something goes on in the world is what we're finding now. When I add that into my drip campaign that I acknowledge what's happening out there and I'm worried as well. I always put myself, I'm worried about the interest rates. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's a couple of go-to. If you need anything, let me know. And I always refer it back to the, I don't give advice. Yeah. I say, he's a really good mortgage broker. He's happy. He works with me happy to answer your questions. And that just also solidifies you as the person who is helping to answer something in kind of a really weird time right now. Mm -hmm. That I just gave you guys an email to submit. (laughs) 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 If, If I were creating a drip today, yeah, billion percent. That's what I would be putting on next week when we start creating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was including something like that, and whether it's part of that or you want to send it out to all of your people that are currently in your database as well as a mass email, uh, yeah. because you know they might already hit them with another previous trip. Um, but yeah, and then it's just remembering them that's in there. So when things start changing, you're gonna have to oh, switch yes. out that email, right? It's now it's something else that you want to send them. Yeah. Crystal, I do. And this is why when you get into the system of working your leads, you know what's in your drip. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, there is no way I will ever forget what's in my drip. And once mm-hmm. something calms down, then you know what I do? I just mm-hmm. go back in, take out the little bits and pieces and just rework it to something else. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So look at this is amazing. See, we're coming up with some amazing stuff, girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now it's going to put it together. Questions. Yeah, yeah, keep them coming. This is fun. <laughs> Melissa's uh, just asking if you've noticed if the leads aren't good, aren't as good lately or less leads. Um, personally, I know you kind of briefly touched on that uh, when you first started that it's kind of a little bit of everything right now. <laughs> you know, here, here, I'm trying to find this is, oh, Melissa, Melissa. I know Melissa. How are you? I um, haven't heard from you in a while, girl. Um, listen, you know, I'm finding that my leads are always corresponding with um, with my drip campaign. They are always replying. Even today before I came in here, I had three more replies. Um, however, uh, it's all about response time, right? You got to reply back right away. 
You got to show them that you're working. And I think that <laughs> she's good. She says, I think that um, it is a really uneasy time for our leads right now, not knowing what the heck is going on out there. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're not noticing a bit of a response, um, Melissa, just so I'm just being open and honest, she participated in my coaching. So she's got some of my drip. We updated the drip, Melissa, and you would have been sent the newest one, which does have a little bit of the latest stuff in it. Um, make sure that you're using that one because that one's pulling people out a little bit. Okay, good girl. She's a good girl. This one's a good realtor. Um, but I'm noticing I'm getting more people in the car in the last couple of weeks. However, getting them in the car and then buying, I'm not seeing. Mm -hmm. They're taking a longer time. And I mean, I don't, I don't blame them. So keep it up. You know, you can convert. She's a great realtor, uh, but we got to be in there for the long run right now. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, I, I don't have any answers, but I am getting a ton of response just as I always had, but nowhere near doing the offers right away. Like I was even at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ah, listing. See what she said? Yeah, she got two months ago. She got a listing from the drip and she sold it. Because Melissa, see, I told you, text me when you do have success. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about success. Um, mm -hmm. And you know what? Here's an interesting thing because I think that we all put way too much pressure on ourselves. <laughs> She's laughing. Well, because we look at our agent locator leads and we say, we're only having success if we do a deal. And here's, of course, I understand that's correct, but success with our leads isn't just about the deal. It's about the fact that they've started communicating with mm -hmm. you. That is the most important thing. You are never going to convert a lead if they're not replying back to your emails or if you're making the calls, answering your calls. So look at that. Take a look at the fact that they're replying and then go, oh, my gosh, I'm really successful at this. You know, you'll sell them a house mm -hmm. in good time. But honestly, it is about the fact that they're answering you and asking you questions. Yeah, it's getting get in there, get in there in the first place. Yep. Yeah. I'm um, just trying to see. There's no other questions populated in here yet. Uh, Tracy's just mentioning, don't forget to add some SMSs into those drips. So absolutely. Uh, so if anyone, ha we do have some, of course, uh, that our IS18 does does use that you can pull up and throw in there as well. Uh, because again, yeah, having the on SMS in there just to kind of nudge them definitely can work for some some of the leads are more responsive through text than they are through email um a lot of our campaigns and the systems for the initial leads are a lot of text heavy campaigns so it's nice when we can have one that kind of balance right it's not you know just emails or just text message but a little bit of both um it also makes it sound a little seem a little bit more realistic as well too right yeah, yeah, my campaign, my latest one, and I thought that I had sent it to you, Tracy, because she's been on my program as well. Uh, my latest one is an 85-day uh, drip campaign, and it's got a series of two to three texts throughout it. Mm -hmm. um, and the texts work. In fact, on Friday night, uh, I got a text from a gentleman replying back to, because I always send a text reminding them, make sure you download the Home Locator app. Uh, mm -hmm. because I, I include that email in my drip campaign. And sure enough, they were like, oh, I can't find it. Can you send it to me? So I was able to do it right over the phone, which yeah. me, that's success, mm -hmm. right? Yes. That's success. I had a reply by text. So definitely incorporate that. The drip campaign, when we mention that, Crystal, is not just emails. The mm -hmm. drip campaign has always consisted of text and email. I don't inundate the texts. It's not like I have 20 texts over, mm -hmm. over 85 days. I think we've got three, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. And yes. then if I'm not getting response, what I do is I'll pull one away and I'll put it somewhere else in the drip. Mm -hmm. Right? 
just trying to figure out what ones are working. And so far, the latest changes that I've made, this has been the happiest I've ever been with my drip campaign ever. And I've crystal, I've always been happy. Yeah. I've always been happy with it because it's always worked, but this one, it's, it's far beyond anything I thought I would ever have. Okay. Yeah. And it's just trial and error, right? Yeah. Oh, it is. It is. It's a process and really working your system. Like I know you're in your system all the time. You're manual, you're hands on with your campaign. So you're watching it. Yeah. Right. A lot of individuals um, and, you know, whether in our industry, whether our clients or other clients, they'll take a campaign, assign it to their leads. They have no idea what they're sending. Right. So we've, I've had it before where, you know, some clients, they're like, oh, where is this, whatever, this hot list of whatever. I'm like, there is no hot list of whatever. You have to produce that. (laughs) Right. It's like, know what you're sending people. Don't just, because it's there, you know, that's great, but know what is it. You might want to tweak it. You might be, you might say something that you don't actually offer. Right. So it's make sure you know what you're sending people because then you can stand behind it. Yeah. Right. Or you might want to tweak it. You can adjust it to sound more. You know, like I don't do that, but I do this. So let's just modify this, this message here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. mm -hmm. We got, wow. You guys have been amazing. Mm -hmm. Sabrina just wants to know, uh, you know, how do you say that you drip? Do they get an email after two or five days from each other or SMS? I know I've looked at yours. Yours is more spaced apart. So we were looking at, I think uh, a few days after you've assigned the campaign, I think a text I do, message goes out, something yeah, like that. I do a text message within uh, one to two days. Then I have my first email that goes out on day seven, my second email on day 15. I have a day 30, day 35 mm-hmm. and go forward. And then there's yeah. some texts in between. Mm-hmm. But I want to stress as well that it's about the drip campaign, but don't forget, they're also getting listings every day. Mm-hmm. So this is why for me, uh, through trial and error, when you do too many drip, if I were to do a drip every single uh, week, you know, something additional from me, uh, it might tick them off, right? Yeah. Because what they're getting is they're getting listings every day. So Sabrina, the power behind a drip campaign is in conjunction with them getting listings from you right? So never forget when they come on agent locator, they're not signing up to hear from us. They're signing up because they want to see houses. So Mm -hmm. you're always going to remember that foremost, right? I'm going to send them houses. And that's your name in their inbox every day. That drip campaign that we add is just that simple touch that basically says, hey, Bob, it's Tara. Is there anything you need? Can I answer any of your questions? Do you need a mortgage person? right? So we're just simply just adding to that softly from them getting listings every day. So that's why it's important to set them up a certain way, right? We want them to have a little bit of everything, not not too much, (laughs) not too much in order to answer and reply back to the drip. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, and then you're solid, absolutely solid. When I think to the less, uh, so again, consider yourself because we've all signed up for the odd thing here, there, and like you're getting an email constantly, like every day or every week or just too much to the point where now we don't even open those emails. We're just going to go to the side because we've kind of lost interest. Whereas yeah. if they're more spread out, it's like, oh, Tara's sending me an email. I wonder what this is about, right? It's not as, you know, it's just more of like it's sporadic. Or right. comes across as being sporadic, not routine, like every single day. Yeah, not interesting. up with something. I'm getting like yeah. looking one to two emails a day. It's like, oh my gosh, like this is, I don't know why I haven't unsubscribed <laughs> yet. Right. But it's just a lot. It's like, I don't even look at them. I see them there. I don't even look at them, right? Because it's like, now this is just, this is total, just a sales sales campaign is what it is. Trying to get you to buy into something. That way. I never yeah. wanted So let's go back to the first sentence Mm -hmm. that you said. We're giving them something of value. Mm -hmm. We're coming from a place of contribution. And that doesn't mean that we're going to hound them every day, which is why I believe, and again, this is just solely my personal opinion and what's worked for me, Mm -hmm. is that's why I've kind of spaced them out to when they actually hear from Tara, it's once a week, and then sometimes it's a couple of weeks before I do Mm -hmm. that. And I'm telling you, they reply back. 
Remember the success is in the reply because once they start replying, then I can go forward and trying to get them in the car. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of book of showings through my age a lot. And I believe with all my heart that is because they're hearing from me in that way. My name is being solidified in their inbox as the realtor they they will probably use mm-hmm. down the road, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, And that's the branding. And that's how I believe lead conversion works is they're building trust in you mm-hmm. simply by how gently we're, we're, we're telling them that we're here. Yeah. You're telling them there. And, or if you're, you are communicating with them, it comes from an educational kind of, how can I be resourceful to you kind of standpoint rather than just, just the sale. You're, you're looking out for them, not yourself. You always got to remember that. And if, yeah. if they have any kind of sense that you're out there for your own benefit, you're, you've lost them. And, and, right? and listen, I've picked up some of my agent locator leads. Here's the thing you always want to remember. If they're on our agent locator, they're on other lead systems too, right? They're mm-hmm. signing up for everything. And I have done multiple deals with leads where agents were way too heavy on them. Mm-hmm. And they were like, no. And, and I, if I had a nickel for every time these people have said to me, you treated me so different than the other ones. And that's mm-hmm. why I always knew it would be you, right? Mm-hmm. So that's why you always want to have that non-salesman, but we're salesmen <laughs> type yeah. of growth, right? Yeah. 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 And it's like you, it's reaching out or even, you know, considering it's hard to do because some, some of us actually do need the money. We do need to have these transactions happening um, we're a little bit more stressed about it. Um, oh. but it's, it's, you go in almost as that kind of, added, I've got nothing to lose, yeah. right? I've got nothing to lose. You're more relaxed. You're not going to come across as anxious, you know, yeah. whereas like, if we're like trying to, we need this person to buy, we well, hopefully this guy's going to buy soon or move soon. We're going into a conversation, whether it's through email or through the phone, already a little bit anxious. Right. So it's kind of stepping back and you have nothing to lose. I just need to add my value here. Yeah. Um, and kind of go from there. And you'll find that a lot of people are attracted, right, to that. The energy is there, whether the tone of your email and how you're communicating with them or when you're on the phone with them, you're a lot relaxed, you're resourceful and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I think so really what we want, we're almost nearing our time now, is we want everybody mm-hmm. to maybe send us an email or even a bullet yeah. point thing. Yeah, yeah. So, you, ex- yeah. Exactly. So, it could be, you know, so many different topic capabilities for, for this, right? Um, but something that you would want to include or would in, in an email drip that you're, you're sending, whether it's going out on, you know, one of the initial emails or something, maybe like 30, 30 minutes or 30 days in the future, like what you would be saying to these people 30, 30 days down the road, if you're adding in. So, um, so try, try to be a little creative. Then that way we're not getting, you know, 30 of the same email, the most part, um, or I very similar email. I think we're going to get the, like, a, well, we'll see different yeah, personalities we're get different. coming through those. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that if we can combine them and then we can show you guys how easy it can be then you can simply adjust and change and and Mm -hmm. and so forth it's going to be phenomenal I'm really excited about this Um, and then what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of tweaking here and there and then before you know it you got a sample drip that you can there you go there we are absolutely you see my little daughter like poking her head everywhere like I've got some some face growing out my armpit (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's so nice to have everybody here. Oh, yes. awesome. So I posted my, my email there in the chat okay. again. Um, as I said, I'll put it together as a yeah, Google Docs. So then that way, hopefully, we get enough by, you know, if you try, what are we at, Tuesday? You know, sometime by, you know, next week. Like, there's no rush, but we it is kind of a rush because we need it by the next session. But then that way, I could potentially get you guys the Google link. Right. before our next session. So then if you want to comment on any of those that are there, offer like even just sentence structure, you know, let's, let's like, I recommend switching it like this or approaching this topic like this instead. Right. So Perfect. It's, we're putting everyone's great minds together and coming yeah. up with something that everyone's going to benefit from. Right. So. 
<laughs> right? This is what it's all about. This is why we're doing it. And I love it. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. And thank Alrighty. you for that call me. Yeah. Love it. I love hearing from you. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks to thanks everyone. We'll see okay. y'all in a couple weeks. Bye everyone. Bye. Okay.